<laughs> All right, it's working. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I was like, hello, stop, hello, stop. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> no worries. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> it's the year of technical difficulties. I work in the online world all the time. I'm like, Zoom call, it's like, connection. And I'm like, yes, we'll just wait. Yeah. So we had a we had like 30 people in here, then it dropped off because it's literally like stopped my call. So hopefully they come back. Okay, but sure. uh, thank you for joining. Um, yeah, to the people who are here, I see lots of people coming. So hello to everyone. Really interesting for you all to like write in the chat box where you're from so we can know like how many people are in Germany, how many people are in um outside of Germany so we know which level you guys are looking for already but we'll start so Kyle you want to introduce yourself and Feather Insurance sure yeah so um, yeah firstly thanks for thanks for having us here um, and giving us the opportunity to speak with um, some of your um, followers um, so yeah I'm Kyle and I'm I'm with Feather Insurance we're uh, we're a company based in Berlin um, and uh, what we do is we help, um, yeah, mostly non uh, non German speakers uh, find insurance in Germany. So, not just health insurance, but uh, other types of insurance like um, uh, policies for your to protect your home or apartment, uh, mm -hmm. your person, um, your adding like additional dental insurance, legal yeah. insurance, even so. I'm sure we'll go into that, but uh, basically we make it really easy for people to get their insurance sorted uh, digitally and, uh, and all in English. And we've helped tons of people do this. And um, yeah, we're excited to keep growing and, and help more people in the future. Yes, this is what's needed in Germany. I came to Germany seven years ago and trying to like figure out everything in German was so challenging. And I've seen the international community here grow very quickly and lots of services for internationals and foreigners in Germany in English, which is great. Also really, really simple. I mean, German insurance words are probably the most longest and complicated words there are. So you guys really do a good job. I was looking at it and I just got my dental insurance today. So <laughs> really excited for that. Um, yes, yeah, so let's start at the top basically. So what is the first thing that you need as an international person living in Germany that's public or you need insurance, your health insurance, yes? So what, yeah. what are the two different kinds that you op offer? What are the differences? Definitely, so um, yeah, um, I should say that health insurance is the only uh, type of insurance that is required by law to have in Germany. So everybody who lives in Germany must have health insurance. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's obviously super important to have. And, uh, but some people need it uh, as well, not, not only for the practicality of having health insurance in case something happens, but a lot of people do need to get insurance because it's uh, part of the uh, visa process. So anybody yeah. who's moving to Germany from outside of the EU who needs a visa, mm -hmm. they always have to show that they have health insurance. So this is kind of a pain point for people uh, because yeah. it can be difficult to sort out maybe on your own um, and especially in some specific cases. So um, yeah. yeah, to start off, we, we offer um, uh, basically health insurance, no matter your situation. So yeah. if you're ever, if you're somebody who's completely lost with health insurance, we can help you. If you're somebody who has a job, we can help you. Uh, but basically uh, we, we offer three types. So there's mm -hmm. public health insurance, which I think most people um, in Germany are, are on. Uh, so there's a number of different uh, health insurance funds. Um, maybe some of your, some people listening are familiar with like TK, TK, uh, AOK, DAK, the kind of big ones. Uh, and we work with uh, all these providers to help people get set up. Um, then you have uh, private health insurance. Uh, so this is for people who are like high income earners uh, that are employed or people who are self and what question? is what is the threshold for a high income earner as to get private insurance? Because I was always confused with that. Yeah, sure. So it's um, it's always changing, but right now I think it's around uh, sixty five thousand euros per mm -hmm. year. If you're employed in Germany, that means yeah. you can basically opt out of public health insurance and take out private. Uh, yeah. Everybody who earns less than that with a German contract has to take out public health insurance. Okay. Um, but people, um, since, you know, with technology, you have a lot of people who are self-employed as well, so they don't actually have a German contract. Um, 
And a lot of these people, um, you know, if they have certain income, um, you know, uh, let's say something above 40,000 euros per year and they're self-employed, we can also help them get signed up for private health insurance. Uh, because yeah. sometimes um, they might not be able to sign up for public health insurance. Like there's a lot of people who are moving to uh, Germany, let's say, as an example from the U.S., Mm -hmm. uh, you're actually not able to join public health insurance as a self-employed person. Um, you have to find a job with a German contract in order to join. So this leaves people in kind of a difficult situation. And that's mm -hmm. where the, the third type of insurance comes in. And uh, that's so, the one below 65,000 salary. Yeah. Um, do you mean the, the insurance or the requirement? Yeah, your, the health insurance if you're a freelancer or not employed by a German company. Exactly. So... I would say if you're self-employed, you've moved to Germany, um, you can take out the um, you can take out private health insurance if you're earning, let's say, more than 40,000 euros. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be possible to find a policy for like 35,000 euros uh, and up. Uh, but below that, it, be, it becomes a little bit difficult to get you signed up. So in this yeah. case, we often recommend people to take out what's called expat health insurance. Yeah. And this is a really lightweight insurance um, that's that's kind of meant to cover you for. Uh, it's not as comprehensive as private republic, uh, mm -hmm. but it's meant to cover you for like maybe your first one or two years while you're in Germany and kind of getting yeah. settled. Um, if at some point you find that you that you get a job, then you can easily uh, cancel the policy and switch to public health insurance. And, then and if you start... um, yeah, sorry, the with this kind of stuff, like right now I have public insurance and I don't mm -hmm. have private yet. I don't know if I'll ever be able to make the switch, but uh, with public insurance is basically I can do whatever I want, go into any doctor's office and I don't pay a cent mainly. But with this light expat insurance, would you have to prepay when you go to a doctor's visit or is it somehow covered? That's right. So you do have to prepay. So uh, the policy kind of works like this. If you become sick, ill, injured, uh, what, what have you, um, you need to go to a doctor. You just find one in your area. I don't know. You can do a, a search with um, Dr. Lieb or just do a Google search. You find one, you visit them, and you just um, pay for the appointment up front. Mm -hmm. And then you submit a claim to us uh, through, um, uh, through your account. It's yeah. super easy. You just take a photo of the bill, and then, um, then we just reimburse you for the, for the appointment. So this, uh, this expat insurance is super great for people who are, uh, who are not employed. So you have mm -hmm. a lot of people moving to Germany. We help uh, tons of people, people from India, you know, South America, United States. It's also oh. really good for people who are coming, you know, for maybe a relationship or something who just want to test things out, don't have a job yet, always get your insurance. So that's yeah. super helpful. Exactly. Like, I mean, a little bit of my background, I'm from the U.S. Um, and I moved to Germany like three years ago. And mm -hmm. when I moved, I, I, I didn't have a job. So um I, I was one of these people who were fa found themselves in a difficult situation where uh, you need health insurance to fulfill your visa. For me to like get my visa, um, I needed to provide them a German health insurance, but I'm not able to join the public system. So I'm like, yeah. what do I do? Um, uh, you know, three years ago, we weren't actually around, so I didn't use um, mm -hmm. our insurance. Uh, but basically, people in this situation who don't have a job, uh, they can take out our expat health insurance and it's great because it would work for their, for their first visa and it, yeah. it covers them in case, you know, they become sick or anything were to, to happen to them, just like, you know, yeah. another type of uh, insurance would. And once they get a job at a German company, they can easily switch over to the public. Yeah. That's, what's really cool about it. So it's like uh, it's month to month. So uh, there's no annual contract. So if you find a job after six months, that's great. Just cancel it and we'll help mm -hmm. you. Uh, we'll help you switch to public. That's super good because when I came to Germany six years ago, I was came with, on an internship and I didn't know anything about health insurance. So I prepaid like $500 for like a full year of oh, wow. emergency health insurance. But then I got a job. So then I got the public health insurance on top. So it's good. It has a flexible option. So, yes, that's good. And when it comes to uh, public health insurance, um, what are the main things that like – and there's so many different brands in Germany to se select a public health insurance from. Um, what is your recommendation when looking for a public health insurance in Germany? Yeah, I mean, we we happen to send a lot of our members, to, a lot of our customers rather to to TK. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just because um, some of them already are familiar with with the brand. Um, it's it's it seems to be really well known in the kind of English speaking space. 
And so most of the time people just, just want to get signed up with them. Uh, they, just, mm -hmm. they have great um, support, um, but all the other providers are also great. I mean, um, in Germany, public health insurance, I think um, it's of everybody's opinion that it, it works really, really well. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think you can really choose um, a bad provider, but we, yeah. we, break, we break it down a little bit more on our, um, on our website. So if anybody um, has questions about it, um, you, you can always get in touch with us, but also on the feather, feather insurance under public health insurance, uh, which you mm -hmm. can get from the navigation, uh, you can see all the different providers that we work with compared. Yeah. So there's some subtle differences between them, but um, by and large, I think that they're all uh, excellent. So um, you, you can't choose uh, wrongly. Yeah. Great. And anyone who's listening who interests about Feather, you can go to the, my link on my bio. I'll post it after this and you can see all the different insurance types. We're going to be talking about them all today or try to talk to most of them. Um, but I have a really good story about German health insurance. I got pretty sick last year um, and I needed to get a surgery, a very intensive surgery. And I was in the hospital for four days. And then also after that, I was also in a rehab clinic. Many of you who follow me saw my journey there. And it was like the most amazing experience to have as a first time using like public health in Germany. You always think, oh, like you don't ha know what it's going to be like far away from home, Canadian. Um, but I was really well taken care of. And this was all paid by my public health insurance that I pay from my salary each month. And I didn't have private and I didn't get didn't feel like I needed anything else. So some people think, oh, you can only have a special stuff of private insurance, but public insurance is actually quite good already here. Yeah, that's really good to hear. And I think that's, um, yeah, that's what we hear from most people. I mean, um, it's really straightforward in Germany. Something happens to you, you go to the doctor and you get treated, um, yeah. you know, with rarely ever, ever any extra cost to you. So that's, yeah. that's awesome to hear. And what's a few benefits if you do have that salary threshold uh, to having private insurance and what's a downfall of it? Definitely. Great question. So um, I would say that anybody who's earning over 65,000 euros per year, then um, you have the option to take out private health insurance. You should make that choice carefully because it can be difficult for you to join up uh, public health insurance in the future. It's not impossible, but we like to tell people to really carefully consider it because it's not always, um, it's not always possible. Uh, and yeah. if it is, it's kind of tricky. So um, yeah, we, we kind of um, really stand by making honest recommendations to people. So that's, I think that's absolutely um, a fundamental part of Feather is just uh, if you're confused about your insurance situation, you don't know whether to choose public or private. We are not going to act like a traditional insurance person and tell you, uh, you should sign up for private because that's better for us. Like yeah. we want to consider every part of your life. And um, in some cases you're earning a lot of money, but you should still stay on public. So uh, for example, um, private health insurance makes a lot of sense for people who are young, healthy, high income earners, um, single, um, you know, no children, no dependents. And especially so if they think that um, if they know like, with a degree of certainty that they're going to leave Germany after like five years or 10 years. Uh, the reason that is, is because on public health insurance, you're paying contributions uh, basically mm -hmm. to, uh, to go for when you get older. So like uh, care for when you're, when you're older and you're, you're yeah. inevitably going to be more expensive to insure with private health insurance. You don't pay that. So you're saving a lot of money there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if you're like a young, healthy person, um, and yeah, you don't have any dependents, um, then I think private health insurance, it makes a good case for it because, uh, you, you'll just be saving qu quite a bit of money. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, however, if you do, yeah, if you have a partner, maybe, um, a spouse who's not working, uh, then maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll, you'll consider public health insurance because then that person is covered, uh, mm -hmm. for free. Uh, or of course, if you have children, then public health insurance looks even more attractive to you, but um, yeah. Any anybody in this situation can always get in touch with us and, and, and ask us about this. Yeah, for sure. And uh, question about private. I always I thought it was like private insurance was kind of like a VIP thing. So like, oh, you can only go to this dermatologist if you're private. I mean, I've been told that. So does it also give you like VIP access to better doctors? Um, in some cases, I, I believe that it does. I mean, I think everybody's individual experience is, is very different. Um, so n none of this is to say that public health insurance isn't good in Germany, yeah, um, but <laughs> some doctors will, um, it, it's just, it's just the way it is. Some doctors will like prioritize, uh, private health patients. 
Um, oftentimes, like in the, yeah, there, there's um, um, doctors that only take private health insurance. Uh, so that's just kind of the way it is um, that you, uh, you get access to, to maybe more specialized doctors, specialized care, uh, or in some cases you just get seen first. Um, so um, those are some like advantages to being on private health insurance as well. Um, but yeah, for, for more like um, specific details, again, like if you're in this situation, maybe you're, you have a job where you're, that you're going to accept uh, and you're confused on public private, just mm -hmm. get in touch and, and someone would be more than happy to help you. Great. And if you guys have questions about public or private insurance, just pop it in the box. Now we'll answer it at the end. So just go ahead and we'll go back to that. Um, now we are going to go on to the top of topic of my favorite German insurance word, which I can't say. And that's half fleet, the Schicherung, which is that's right. <laughs> the liability, yeah. liability insurance. And as a Canadian, this was something I only ever thought to ever have was in Germany. I've never been really told about it. I have it for like your car and stuff like that um, and your car insurance. But as a person, liability insurance is something that was really new to me in Germany, but they treasure it here. So maybe you can quickly explain what liability insurance is. Sure. I mean, liability insurance is really straightforward. It's going to cover you for damage that you cause uh, to somebody else's person or property. So uh, you injure somebody um, somehow, I don't know, on the street, uh, you cause them bodily harm, uh, you uh, damage somebody's like um, somebody's items, their work computer, you spill coffee on it, uh, you lose your work keys, you lose the keys to your building. And now um, a big thing in Germany is, if you lose the keys to your building, uh, oftentimes, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> You tell the Don't landlord, <laughs> yeah, you tell the landlord and then they have to replace all the locks in the building in the worst case, which can be several thousands of your, you know, you know, a couple thousand euros worth of yeah. damage. You don't want to be liable for that. So just get liability insurance. It's like, it's just, it's an awesome thing, actually. I mean, everybody should have it. Most people in Germany do. Most Germans do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's quite affordable, too. Like, yeah, you know, it's like I a don't... cup of coffee per month. It's like five euros. Uh, yeah. per, per month and uh, you're covered for like you know up to millions of dollars worth of damage that you could potentially cause uh, mm -hmm. but the most commonplace thing is you lose your keys you damage somebody's um, somebody's items and then you just get in touch with us we ask you for information um, and we we pay back your uh, you know your lost keys etc whatever it is so mm -hmm. everybody should absolutely have that one like health insurance and liability insurance absolutely yes and I think so as well. I've never had to make a claim with my liability insurance, but I do know people who print, you know, accidentally hit someone with their bike on the street. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, I mean, they were not really hurt, but they were, you know, claimed a liability on that. So it really can help in those situations. Um, at least Definitely. it's not, well, it's not like America here where everyone's so quick to sue on everything, but I think it's really safe to have that. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And, and the next thing we can talk about, um, is the uh, dental insurance. So this is something I recently learned about, and it's probably something you probably think, why would I need that? I'll just, you know, health insurance covers my dental, but I didn't really know when we spoke, and I actually thought it was really cool to offer for dental insurance in Germany. So you can uh, talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's like a, what's called a supplemental insurance. So supplemental dental insurance. Uh, it basically, if you can think of it like this, it kind of stacks on top. It sits on top of your existing public health insurance mm -hmm. uh, and it covers you for yeah everything else at the dentist that public health insurance doesn't cover. So I think some people are surprised to learn that in Germany, uh, public health insurance doesn't cover fully dental. Uh, so yeah. if you if you have like certain more advanced uh, procedures that need to be done um, mm -hmm. to your teeth, or if you, um, you know, if you need like certain uh, white fillings, like composite fillings, like the more advanced ones, uh, sometimes it's, it's not always covered uh, or your public insurance will need to cover a portion of it. Uh, in like the worst cases, people that get like catastrophic damage to their teeth, like they're in a, they fall on their bike or something like that. Public health insurance will only cover like to a certain amount um, in mm -hmm. some cases. So it's really good to be like fully protected. Um, the kind of the most, um, the, like the best kind of reason why you would take out dental health insurance is that, um, which is, was a surprise to me and is often a surprise to our customers, is that uh, public health insurance won't pay for a dental cleaning. 
Uh, so mm -hmm. in Germany, you go to the dentist, they kind of look at your teeth, examine them, they tell you, okay, you need this or that. Uh, and they, but, they tell you after how much it costs. Like I've had it when I'm right. taking good care of my teeth. They're like, yeah, it took us a long time. So it'll be 100 euros versus before it was cost like 60. So it's like, okay. But yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the dental cleaning isn't, isn't covered. Uh, but on our, uh, on our dental insurance, just for nine euros per month, you get two dental cleanings per year. So yeah. um, if, if you're unfamiliar, a dental cleaning in Germany can be like 100 to 120 euros. So yeah. if you just use those two, um, if you just use one of those cleanings, you're already, the policy is already paid for. And then of course mm -hmm. it would pay for anything else that, that could happen to you. If you need like a root canal or like a serious uh, surgery or something like that would, would cover the, the balance. Yeah, I think it's actually quite good. And the fact that it covers not just one, but two cleanings. Yeah. And um, you, can, you can also cancel it after a year as well if you don't need it, right? That's right. Yeah, you yeah. can you can cancel uh, if if you don't if you don't ever use it, you can always cancel like any time. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you make a claim, then you they have to wait one year before you can cancel. Uh, that makes but sense. but that that claim should be totally worth it. I mean, assuming it's if it's a dental cleaning, then you already you paid for the policy basically. But yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, Haley Rawlinson has a question. I don't know if you can see the questions in the box. It says, uh, is Feather an insurance company itself, or do you just direct people to other insurance companies and is eye care slash glasses included in health insurance? Great, great question. Um, so Feather is kind of an insurance um, service provider, basically. So uh, we, we don't actually, um, we don't actually, um, you know, um, create, the, create the policy. Uh, we're not the, the insurer, uh, but we, we, help, we help with the entire process from signing up to making claims to billing. Uh, so we just like put everything together in one place uh, so it's super easy for the user um, to kind of access their insurance, use it, make claims, change their billing, change their address. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're not, we're not the insurer. Yeah, so you'll be and, directed to, but no, normally if you sign directly with the insurer, you won't get the same level of English service, which is it, what you're offering. 100%, yeah. I mean, that's the huge, uh, that's one of the best like um, uh, aspects of, of, of Feather is just, you get excellent uh, English speaking support. Um, you know, once you take out a policy with us, then you can, uh, you can access this anytime and uh, whatever, whatever you need help with, if you need to help finding a doctor um, or ch yeah, like changing your address, changing your billing, um, sorting your claims, stuff like that, we, we help you with. So uh, it's really cool. You take out one insurance policy with us and then you can see all the other uh, policies and then you can just add them. And since we have your billing info, um, you don't have to, there's, there's not much work for you to do. Um, I think the second question was yeah. about eye uh, vision and eye care. Um, I think that depends. So um, on public health insurance, I mean, I obviously wear, obviously wear glasses. I think it's, um, it's actually, it's kind of limited. Um, so uh, I think you have to have a certain, like, uh, you have to have basically be like quite visually impaired uh, for your like eye test and your eyeglasses to be covered. So mine, for example, because it's not so bad, weren't covered. Uh, that was on public. Uh, but then on private, um, I believe that there are some policies that do that do cover it. Um, even on our expat health insurance, people are kind of surprised that there is a there is some budget there annually, um, mm -hmm. at least on the on the premium policy that covers uh, covers you for vision for up to a certain amount. I think it might be like 200 euros uh, mm -hmm. per year, which is probably enough to get an eye test and, and yeah. some uh, glasses. So. And with uh, my yeah. with with my insurance company, I know that if you go to the gym go to the gynecologist, uh, not a smoker. If you keep your BMI good, mm -hmm. uh, you can like have this like little checklist and you get these points and then you can cash us in for nice eye, like eyeglasses and stuff like this, which uh, yeah. I've done before. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Are you with uh, Aoka or? Bomber. Ah, okay, Bomber, cool. Yeah, yeah, we work with Bomber as well. They're, they're awesome. Yes, I also recommend Bomber. Um, the final thing we wanted to talk about, house rats. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Um, in house rat words, sounds so like weird. <laughs> funny, house funny. Rat. It's yeah. too. It's too. House take rat. care of the rat, rat in your house. No, it's um for the insurance for the contents of your home. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that everybody, uh, if you have means to, should absolutely take out all these insurances that we that we've mentioned. But um, yeah. Again, like uh, a household insurance absolutely makes sense i think is is um yeah is is absolutely a necessity um so basically this just covers the items 
uh, within your home. So the stuff that you bring inside the walls, um, the building itself that should be covered by the, the rental company. But if you bring in furniture, you know, an expensive TV, your work computer, your, your, uh, your, you know, your, your computer for personal use. Um, I mean, we all have kind of expensive stuff these days, electronics, et cetera. So yeah. um, it covers those items from like theft, um, water damage, uh, like natural disaster. So if there's like a, a storm or something. Um, also your bike. Yes. Being yes. stolen, which is why I took it out because I was so nervous. My bike, I leave my bike outside. So I'm always nervous my bike is going to get stolen. But knock on wood, it hasn't yet. But my yeah, insurance covers that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, it, it covers these things against um, all, all of those, um, those things that could happen. Um, so, you know, yeah, why, why not um, add that policy as well? And, and it's again, also covering damage, as you said, like if there's some nat like natural disaster. Yeah, I mean, let's yeah. say there's a flood or, um, I mean, yeah, we, in Germany and in the West, at least they experienced some, some really bad flooding. So that would have been, you know, that's a case that um, that insurance would have been, uh, yeah. would have been handy. Um, yeah, but all sorts of storms or something, if you get water damage due to that, um, it would be covered. Uh, but also, yeah, burglary, um, even in that would include your Keller space as well, which I think is a kind of an unfortunately common thing that happens yeah. in, in cities is your bike gets stolen from your Keller. Uh, so that would be your, your seller um, would be uh, that would be covered. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I have everything now, even dental insurance. I'm a true German. I am fully insured. So we can. Yeah, but. What happens That's when you awesome. come in? You keep getting convinced for more insurance. So there's still... I think I think you're missing just one though, legal insurance. Oh you, yes. You, you have no, to collect, I don't you have I don't have them legal all. insurance yet. But <laughs> That's I when you're know. fully fully German. I'm, it might be something I might need soon now that I'm always on Instagram and doing social media stuff. I gotta like cover my ass there. <laughs> I don't know what I say. Um, yeah, sure. H Haley says, What if I start a fire with a candle? And the uh, oven or the oven. Yeah, then in this case, that would be um, your be your liability insurance. Uh, so it wouldn't be the household contents that you make a claim on. It would be that liability that we spoke about in the beginning. So this happens to people all the time. Like um, just recently, we made a claim to somebody who dropped a bottle of like heavy, a heavy glass bottle of olive oil and shattered like their oven. And you know, in Germany, they have sometimes these like um, glass, glass top. cooktops yeah. that can be super expensive. Or somebody, yeah, you leave the stove on and you burn, you burn the stove uh, because that's not your property. That's the that's the landlord's. Then your yeah. your liability insurance policy would would pay for that. So um, just even more reason to sign up for for liability. Yes. Great question. I'm, I'm actually questioning Haley. Why don't you have liability insurance yet? Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's cheap. A, I had to get that to get my visa to come to Germany. Actually, so I've wow. had for a long time, and yeah. they required it by law. Um, that's so interesting. Was there any other insurance you want to talk about today before we go to quick Q&A? I think, I think it was just legal. So, I mean, yeah. if you're somebody who, um, yeah, like if you, if you're, if you have, um, I mean, if you have the extra means to sign up for legal insurance, uh, absolutely. So that, uh, that protects you um, against any number of things, um, you know, like uh, somebody is, is like trying to take action against you. Um, or if you, um, if you need to take action against anybody else, um, mm -hmm. if you need to have a contract reviewed, you can access free legal insurance. Uh, so you can get somebody to call you in English and give you mm -hmm. like a uh, free legal uh, support based on any number of things. I don't know. You, um, you get a rental car and you cause an accident and the other person is saying that it's, um, you know, or you're in an accident. The other person is saying that it's your fault. You're saying it's his fault. You don't know what to do. Maybe you do have to like go to court or you have to um, write some legal documents, especially if, you, um, if you're not a German speaker, uh, this insurance is, is super handy uh, because you can, you can access a lawyer to help you write this document or get in touch with the other party uh, or just get um, legal advice. Um, so this one is, is super great. People can find out more on the, on yeah. the website. Uh, but I'm actually like, I should probably get that too, you know, just top it off of everything. <laughs> Right. I mean, self self-employed persons even more so because maybe they're dealing with work contracts with different yeah. parties, uh, stuff like that. If you need your contract reviewed, maybe you're trying to buy a home in Germany. Uh, you don't know the specifics of the contract. You need somebody to help you with that. There's just tons of applications why you would want legal uh, legal insurance. Yeah. So a I super nice so a super nice to have definitely. Yeah. 
I had no friends who've had it. And I'm just like mm, a little bit jealous of your insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not too expensive either. So yeah, um, yeah, you can get a policy pretty easily. Yeah, considering how much a lawyer costs, it's definitely not that expensive. Absolutely. So the remainders in the audience was 15, but I've seen people come in and out who just joined. We're just talking about insurance. We talked about public, private, um, liability, and con rental content, dental, and legal insurance. So if you guys have any questions about those, please do some comments now. We have a few minutes left. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and, and if um, if every if anybody has any questions, um, yeah, outside of this, um, you can always just get in touch with us. You have the link in your in your bio. Yeah. Um, or uh, better yet, is to follow um, Feather Insurance on Instagram. And uh, we post like some interesting stuff uh, every now and then, and then you can always get in touch with us there uh, or message us on, on Instagram. Um, that would yeah. be, that'd be awesome. What's really cool is that you're all run by millennials and other expats. So you guys kind of know how we need our insurance to look like and how it should be, the customer service should be. So I really like that. Um, but yeah, as you said, there's a link in my bio. I'll also share it after the story. Um, and then, yeah. I think it's a great talk. I actually learned some stuff today too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. we will sign off and have a lovely evening. And to everyone who's here, it was nice. Join. Thank you for joining. And we will see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Ciao. Bye-bye.